Kim Philby, a British double agent, senior secret intelligence service, MI6, official who spied for the NKVD and KGB, died on May 11, 1988 in Moscow. He did not get to see the collapse of communist regimes in Europe and, of course, the disintegration of the USSR in 1991. Perhaps he would have drawn some conclusions about the cause he had served for a lifetime. He lived in Moscow as a refugee. For a man with his extraction it was a derisory destiny. What was the story of him and the spy group he was part of? Short History Harold Adrian Russell Philby nicknamed Kim after a novel by Rudyard Kipling, was born in India in 1912. His father, John Philby, was a great connoisseur of Arab civilization, himself a spy, converted to Islam. Philby attended Aldro High School, a boys' school in Shackelford near Godalming in Surrey, UK. As a teenager, he spent some time with the Bedouins in the desert of Saudi Arabia. Following in his father's footsteps, Philby continued at Westminster School, which he left in 1928 at the age of 16. In 1931 Philby won a scholarship to Trinity College, Cambridge, majoring first in history and then in economics. Here he entered a circle of Marxist intellectuals and made friends with Guy Burgess and David McLean with whom he remained connected all his life, the three sharing a mutual interest in Marxism. After all three were recruited into Soviet espionage, their managers instructed them to find out all they could about counterintelligence practices in the United States and Britain. After graduation, Philby married Alice Litzy Friedman, a communist, in his native Vienna. The newlyweds traveled to Spain. Here his spy career begins to take shape after participating in the Spanish Civil War as a journalist for the London Times. To camouflage his political sympathies, he reported from Franco's camp, was forced to break up with Litzy in 1938 so that her communist reputation would not be discovered. World War II He worked as a journalist until 1940 when Guy Burgess, a British secret agent who was himself a Soviet double agent, recruited Philby in the MI6 section of the British Intelligence Service. Returning to London, he applied to be integrated into MI6, British espionage, and was received. After a short time, he came to lead the department in charge of fighting the USSR. If between 1941 to 45, he had the alibi that the USSR and Britain were allies in fighting Hitler's Germany after the Cold War began. In 1944, Philby took his Soviet bosses by surprise, offering them U.S. plans to build a nuclear bomb. Thus, Philby contributes, to a large extent, to the successes of the Soviet intelligence services, which sought to approach people who had information related to U.S. nuclear plans. The Soviet Union succeeds in building its own atomic bomb, conducting the first nuclear test in 1949. Philby grew rapidly among the SIS, becoming one of its most trusted agents, and acted for almost eight years as a mole for the Soviets. Although twice during his SIS career in the UK, Philby was close to being discovered on both occasions, Soviet intelligence officers who deserted to the UK suggested that a senior foreign ministry official was Soviet agent since the 1930s thus managed to avoid detection for more than 30 years. In 1945, he received the Order of the British Empire for his intelligence work during the war. He provides the Soviets with lists of British British agents operating beyond the Iron Curtain, they were all shot. In 1945, a Soviet diplomat in Istanbul, Konstantin Volkov, signaled to the British that he wanted to fail. His letter reached Kim Philby who announced Moscow. Volkov was abducted, taken to the USSR and executed. Another bloody affair a landing trained in England was parachuted into Albania to fight Enver Haja. Philby announced Moscow. The paratroopers were captured on landing and executed. Istanbul 
His tasks for the British included activities in neighboring Arab countries where he made regular trips. In the Balkans, Istanbul was a base for operations in Albania where the British and Americans infiltrated numerous guerrilla fighters between 1947 and 1951 in a failed attempt to overthrow Enver Hodge's communist regime, and they were captured and killed by Albanian security forces. There were clearly security leaks from the British side, and Philby was later considered a prime suspect a role he later acknowledged, saying he had no regrets. In addition to the Albanian disaster and regular intelligence gathering, Philby's other activities in Turkey included organizing the establishment of resistance organizations in the neighboring republics of Georgia and Armenia and assessing how the Soviet Union could withstand a possible invasion of Anatolia. Another project in which Philby was engaged was the collection of information about eastern Anatolia and Turkey's border with the then USSR, which was again carried out in collaboration with Tefik. For this purpose, he purchased a special camera with which he photographed the Turkish-Soviet border in the company of Major Feftsi, one of Tefik's officers. Philby left Istanbul in 1949. Only about half of the border had been covered. Moreover, he explored the territory east of Ankara in order to assessing the resilience of a possible Soviet invasion of Turkey. Turkey's armed forces were weakened at the time, which was one of the main reasons why President Ismet Inonu kept Turkey out of World War II. Washington In 1949 Kim Philby was appointed to the British Embassy in Washington. His mission is also on the Secret Service the relationship with the CIA and the FBI. This is how he found out that the Americans had managed to break the codes used by the USSR embassy, and that the CIA knew about the existence of spies at the top of the foreign office. Unmasking and arresting them was only a matter of time. Under these circumstances, his accomplices, Guy Burgess and David McLean, cross the English Channel and arrive in Vienna, France, at the Moscow terminus. Their flight makes a sensation. Knowing the friendship of the three, Kim Philby, although previously out of suspicion, begins to be suspected. He is questioned at length about his relationship with the fugitives. His career is stalled. He is not under arrest. No evidence is found against him. He is defending well, but he is still placed in positions where he no longer has access to sensitive information. In 1955, he was sent to Beirut under cover of a journalist job. Here he marries a third time. In 1962 a Soviet fugitive gives information about the group of five from Cambridge and declares that one of them is in the Middle East. Kim Philby is under investigation again and confesses to being a Soviet spy since the 1930s. He is being asked for full testimony in exchange for immunity. He asked for time to think. But on January 23, 1963, he disappeared from Beirut. Moscow announced six months later that Philby had applied for political asylum in the USSR and was granted it. In Moscow, Kim Philby gave lectures for the KGB. He got married twice more. The USSR post office dedicated a series of stamps to him. He taught lessons to students in espionage schools gave interviews to Western correspondents. He died in 1988 and was buried in Moscow. His legend does not cease to disturb and provoke controversy. We are always more concerned with evil characters than heroes.